had this thought cross my mind last week, and it was about how grateful I am to be doing what I'm doing, and not just for the type of work that I'm doing, but more specifically, I believe that I am in alignment with the assignment that God has for me. In other words, I'm moving in the right direction according to God's plan for me. And I've shared before about how I believe that my life is, uh, can be broken up into three plans. My mom's plans, uh, my plan, and God's plans. So I surrendered and first came into alignment with God's plan back in 2013. And before then, I was all about my plans and would seriously stress myself out trying to figure out my plans, which is crazy because they're my plans. Uh, but that's how ridiculous our plans can be. Um, remember back, I remember back in 2010, and uh, they finally called my number. And at the third round of layoffs, uh, it was now my time to uh, pack it up, and I was sent home. Uh, we had gone through so much financial hardship uh, for several years, and this was just like icing on the cake. Uh, thank you, Jesus, that we were living with my in-laws at the time um, because amongst those financial hardships, we had to uh, voluntarily, what do they call it? Give back your home, basically, short sale. Um, uh, and actually, we had two homes. Um, but so the bright side, we were living with my in-laws and we're all settled in. And um, I remember searching for work. And the most difficult thing about searching for work in 2010 was that everybody was searching for work. Uh, just a reminder, it was coming out of the 08 uh, little recession. Little? <laughs> no, it's a big one. <laughs> recession that we had. Um, so anyways, I'm searching everywhere in the middle of it all. One day I'm talking to one of my brother-in-laws, and he says, or he asked me, you know, maybe it's time for something new. What do you really want to do? And I chewed on it for a second, and my response was, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He said, well, maybe that's where you start. Find out what you really want to do. I started to search just within my thoughts, and I had this idea about helping people. So I'm like, that's it. I want to help people. And so I'm thinking, help people. How do I help people? First ideas that came to my mind were paramedic, uh, firefighter, police officer, and uh, I... Um, threw out lifeguard because I don't even like to get wet uh, or tread, I can't tread water. Uh, but uh, so I looked into becoming a police, police officer and the physical requirements just right out the gate for all the testing and stuff. I'm like, nah. But I reached out to a buddy. He's uh, been a uh, police officer for a long while. And uh, I just was kind of picking his brain and asking him some questions. He said, I don't think it'd be the right fit for you, Chris? Uh, for instance, could you come home and not share with your family how your day uh, was because of the hard things that you've seen? So maybe not. I thought about maybe doing uh, speaking circuits at local high schools. I'd go around and uh, share my story with the youth, encourage them about overcoming, um, staying the course and accomplishing great things no matter uh, the circumstances, or maybe I'd even write a book. But time went on. I started getting phone calls, interviews started coming in. And uh, before I knew it, after 16 months of being out of work, I was back in the grind, living for paychecks again, and trying to maintain a normal life. Fast forward 2013, I had a conviction of God's plans for me and the price he paid for his plans to succeed. He gave his life for me. And he gave his son for me. Remember I've shared before, um, later that year I was sitting at my desk saying to God, uh, these are the plans you have for me? To be alone in my office? Come on, man. I know you've given me gifts, talents, strengths for making connections and speaking. Give me Yankee Stadium and I'll have a night of hope just like Joel Osteen and I'll say whatever you want me to say. And his response was, don't pass up the one person that I put in, front of, put in front of you each day while you're waiting for Yankee Stadium. So the next day, I started living life on a mission. One person a day, and I'll say whatever God wants me to say. 
most of the time it was sparking conversation and then just being an ear. Uh, so a person could have some comfort and hope knowing that someone cares enough to listen. There were times to relate and share testimony and hope for overcoming difficult seasons. And there were plenty of times to pray for people. The following year in 2014, I believe God told me it was time to leave corporate world. So I did. I didn't know what I was going to do for money. My wife thought I was crazy. And, uh, but I was still on a mission. There's someone that God wants me to speak to today. 2015, I became a barber working at a shop just down the street here, still on a mission, and now it was the barber shop that was providing me those opportunities daily. I met a man at the shop in 2017. He invited me to join uh, the staff here at Venture Church. At the time, it was Canyon Creek. And I met another man that year, and he invited me to become the director of an at-risk youth outreach on Casino Road. So I accepted both offers, and in 2018, I started both jobs. I remember while we were negotiating my salaries, I had a combined number in mind. I woke up one morning, and I heard the Lord ask me, would you do this for free? I said, yeah. And I just let it go. We came close to the number, but I didn't. That wasn't my priority. And I do believe it was a test if I was pursuing the money or pursuing the mission. So Pastor Sean said on Sunday, if you will learn how to unlock passion, it will not only change your life, but it can change the world. But what kind of passion is this and how can it change so much? This passion is a conviction, a conviction of faith and purpose. A passion that is not driven by money. It's not even driven by what you love to do. It's driven by your design, who God has created you to be, and the plans, the purpose that he has for you. If passion comes from purpose, you are no longer just living for paychecks. You're living for a purpose. Your life will never be the same. If you're living for purpose... You are a world changer because God has created you to be a contributor, to be a giver of what he has put inside of you, gifts, talents, and strengths. So why did I take you all the way back to 2010? To share my passion journey so far. I was challenged to think about what I really wanted to do with my life. I had the desire to help people, but I didn't know how. I had a conviction about salvation and the plans God has for me. So I committed my life to him and I submit my will to his one day at a time. He gave me understanding for the value of my gifts, my strengths and talents to encourage others. I reflect on his faithfulness and my hope, my passion is stirred up. Even before I committed my life to him, he was speaking to me. He has ordered my steps, and I see how they've aligned to where I'm at so far. You might hear all of this and still say, yeah, but I'm not a pastor, or I'm not equipped to be a pastor, but check this out. His word says that through Christ, he has given us, us, the ministry of reconciliation, so that by our example, we might bring others to him. He's saying that we're all in on this. Bring others how? Your testimony. Because through your testimony, the message of reconciliation is shared with others. And it can be shared wherever you're at. Here at dinner church, on a bus, at work, or even a grocery store. I'm pretty sure Jim's done that at the grocery store. Yeah, see, told you. If you have a conviction about his plans for you, I want to give you the opportunity to receive salvation to unlock passion and begin living for purpose. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes, and everyone repeat after me, please. Father God, I repent of my sins. I declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I receive my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I'm going to invite Miss Cassie Harrison, Mrs. Cassie Harrison, up to lead us through communion right now. I was joking earlier that you're the leader of everything. Uh, she's doing so many things for our Venture Church, the leader of, uh, I'm trying to think of all of them, so mops of marriage ministry, of women's ministry, and also of legacy. Yes, yes which is our 55 plus, is it? Yeah, it's our 55 plus. Yeah. <laughs> I need this. I thought I could use my mom voice. Oh, for the video. Sorry, guys. Um, so I, uh, I've, this is my third, maybe fourth time on staff. Um, I have been married to my husband, Aaron, for, we just celebrated 13 years, so we're about 13 and a half years right now. Um, and we have four kiddos. Uh, I'm a little bit tired. We just got back from a two-week road trip to Yellowstone. We went all over the, all over the place. Um, but I just want to take a moment and share with you. We're going we're gonna to do communion. And I'm, you guys, you get to do this with me for the very first time. Um, I got my credentials as a pastor in January. I think it was January, February. Um, and so this is my very first time leading communion. Um, and so I was talking to Cynthia. I was like, how long do they do this for? Like, how long should I, how long should I do this? She's like, just don't do another sermon. I was like, all right, I can do that. I can do quick. I can be, I can be good. But I do want you to know that as we were talking about passion um, and unlocking your passion, our passion comes from God and having a deep connection with him and having a passion not only for him, but for his word where you are going to grow deeper in relationship with him and having passion for his church and community where you're going to make relationship with others that are going to build you up and challenge you. That is where we, that's where my heart is, is seeing, seeing uh, families and individuals grow deeper in their relationship with God. And um, so I'm sure you guys know how to open this. So you take the little top part. So we're going to take the bread. And the bread, the bread represents his body that was broken so that we could have life, so that we could, um, so we could be here today and experience his freedom, experience his love and his joy. Um, so as we take the bread, I just want you to take a moment and really reflect on what God, has do, what God is doing in your life. I know that we're coming out, we're, we're, there's still a lot going on in the world that we could get caught up with that is just hard. Life could be hard. Your circumstances could be hard. But can I tell you right now that we serve a God that is so much bigger than our circumstances, and he has so much good for you. So as we take this bread, I want you to take a moment and really focus on the good that is happening in your life and the blessings that he has for you. Lord, as we take the bread that represents your body, I pray that you would remind us of the good that you have done, the sacrifice that you made so that we could be in a right relationship with you and with God, that we could be here as servants for you, that we don't have to, we don't have to do anything special, do backflips, have a special handshake to get into heaven. We just get to sit in your grace and your mercy and say that we acknowledge that you are our savior, that you have given it all for us. Lord, we take the bread. And we all know that the blood that was spilled on Calvary represents the purification of us, that there was a transaction that happened, that one person died so that we could live. And as every time I take drink of the blood or of the juice that represents the blood, I always sit and think, as a parent, what would I do for my kids? And then I think, he didn't, I have four that I would do anything for. He has an entire world, not just the one that we have right now, the people that are on the earth, but generations before us and after us that he said, I'm, I'm going to give it all. I'm going to lay down my life for each one of you. And he took on our sin so that we 
could live a life that is full of, is full and is good. And I just, as we take this, just reflect on, again, reflect on the good and what he has, has delivered you from that you are to, where you are today. Lord, as we take of the cup, Lord, as we remember the blood that you spilled on Calvary, I pray that you would just remind us of the sacrifice that you made for us. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to lead each one of us into a right relationship with you. Continue to lead us and guide us closer to you. And that we may use the passion that you have placed inside of us, whatever that might be, to bring others closer to you as well. Lord, we love you and we are so thankful. Thankful for what you did on that cross, that you were willing to go to the cross for us. Go ahead and take it. Lord, I just ask that, that you would just seal in our hearts what Pastor Chris talked about tonight, about our passion. And Lord, passion for you and passion for others and what, what you have for us. The road is never simple. And God, I just pray that you would just be with everyone in this room. I pray that those that, the hands that made the food, I pray that you would bless them this week that you would just pour out on them. And every person in this room, I pray that you would just give them an extra blessing. Lord, I pray that they would just know that you are in their circumstances. We lift them up and we say that those that are going through health, those that are going through just whatever's going on in this room, Lord, you know it. And I just ask that you would just cover each one of them, cover each one of us, Lord. We love you and we thank you. Amen.